the results of the State of JavaScript survey are in, and they mark the perfect time to have an honest discussion about the current state of the front-end ecosystem. With all the recent advancements in frameworks and development tools, I believe we've reached an inflection point, a moment where we, as web developers, need to rethink our approach and mindset as we move forward. For some context, I'm a full-stack developer with over 15 years of experience, and during this time I've had the opportunity to work with nearly all popular front-end frameworks and libraries out there. We'll start with a quick overview of the survey results and then move on to a fair assessment of the major frameworks. I emphasize fair because, let's face it, people often build echo chambers around their favorite technologies, focusing on their strengths while highlighting the shortcomings of the competition. However, you'll see that this is not a healthy approach in 2025, since frameworks are more similar than ever and AI advancements will fundamentally change the way we build products. The state of JavaScript results are filled with useful insights, ranging from the adoption of JS features to backend frameworks or serverless runtimes. What I find really interesting, though, are the usage, interest, and retention charts for the popular front-end frameworks. The results of 2024 are confirming some of the things we already knew, while also hinting to some interesting changes to come. First of all, React remains by far the most used front-end framework, followed by Vue and Angular. It is exciting to see that Angular is gaining traction again, proving that all the work they did in the past years to simplify and modernize the framework is finally paying off. Svelte is slowly gaining momentum in the fourth place, while Preact, a simplified version of React, is in number five. The usage chart is heavily influenced by concrete things like job opportunities or the existing adoption rate of a framework. The interest chart, however, is a better indicator of where the ecosystem is heading. Here we have Svelte and Solid leading the pack with Vue in third place. Angular and React rank lower, which is expected from mature widespread technologies. In my opinion, the retention results are revealing the actual future value of a framework since it measures a developer's satisfaction with tools he already worked with. Solid, Svelte and Vue lead the way here as well, reaffirming the interest we all have in working with simple tools that emphasize developer experience. This discussion can be extrapolated to meta frameworks, where the results are similar to those of the associated frameworks. Astro deserves an honorable mention here, since it leads the charts in interest and retention, and is the only tech which looks like it might have a chance to dethrone next at some point. Okay, now that we've established the current context, let's dive into the major frameworks and take a closer look at some of their drawbacks. We all know the internet is filled with videos and articles outlining the selling points of every framework. But, in order to stay relevant in this modern web dev space, you need the full picture. And, you can only get the full picture by objectively reviewing a framework's drawbacks, not only its strengths. It's only fair we start with React, since it is the most widely used framework by a significant margin. React has three main issues you should be aware of. Well, I'm sure it has more issues than that, so you guys can share in the comments your opinions about React, or any of the other frameworks for that matter. First of all, despite the name, React is not truly reactive. It relies on a virtual DOM and dirty checking to determine which parts of the UI needs updating. In recent years, this became overhead since it is not as efficient as true reactivity found in frameworks like Solid. While this is primarily an internal framework issue and rarely impacts app performance directly, it does leak into the developer experience through constraints like special hooks and dependency arrays. React 19 introduces a compiler aimed at alleviating some of these issues, but it does so by obscuring the complexity rather than addressing the root cause of the problem. Second, I think we should all be aware of the increasing interdependence between the React team and the Next.js team. On the surface, this close collaboration seems beneficial as it provides more resources and momentum to drive the framework forward. However, it also raises concerns about the potential for vendor lock-in. Features and optimizations introduced in React often feel tailored specifically for Next.js, which could inadvertently limit innovation and flexibility in other parts of the React ecosystem. Finally, React server components introduce a level of complexity that many developers find unnecessary and, frankly, counterproductive. While the intention behind RSC is to improve performance by enabling server-side rendering for individual components, the implementation often complicates the mental model of how React applications work. Moving to Angular, I have to be honest. Things here look much better than they did a couple of years ago. The team behind Angular recognized that one of its biggest issues was the unnecessary complexity and they've made significant strides in addressing this. By simplifying APIs, improving the developer experience and modernizing their approach, Angular has managed to shed much of its historical baggage. 
That said, Angular still has a few drawbacks worth mentioning. For starters, its opinionated nature, while helpful in some contexts, can feel restrictive for developers who prefer flexibility. The framework enforces a strict structure and design pattern that might not suit every project, especially smaller ones where such rigidity can feel like overkill. Another challenge is Angular's size and the associated performance trade-offs. Despite ongoing optimization efforts, it's still heavier compared to some of the modern alternatives. Of course, while recent Angular versions are appealing, the reality is that most existing projects are stuck on older versions with little chances of updating. Finally, Angular's learning curve remains a hurdle for many new developers. While TypeScript first development and the RxJS integration are powerful tools, they can feel overwhelming for newcomers. Vue is in a much more interesting situation. This one is the only big established framework not developed by a tech giant. However, at the end of the day, this is a drawback in my book. If you are competing with React and Angular for big projects, you need to have the backing and resources to match what the tech giants offer. Vue's independence is a double-edged sword. It allows for community-driven innovation and flexibility, but it also means it lacks the same level of corporate investment and marketing muscle that frameworks like React and Angular enjoy. This makes it harder for Vue to break into enterprise-level projects where stakeholders often prioritize long-term support and reliability from established organizations. Another challenge for Vue is fragmentation within its ecosystem. With Vue 2 and Vue 3 still coexisting, developers often face compatibility issues or are forced to make difficult decisions about which version to adopt. Vue codebases are also split between Composition API and Options API, which adds another layer of complexity. Svelte is another fan favorite which enjoys increasing interest but has a few important drawbacks you need to be aware of. First of all, its adoption is still far behind the established solutions, which creates a catch-22 situation. Companies are hesitant to adopt Svelte for larger projects because of its smaller ecosystem and limited job market. At the same time, the ecosystem can't grow as rapidly without more widespread adoption. This creates a barrier for developers and businesses looking for a framework with a proven track record and extensive community support. Also, it is worth mentioning that Svelte 5 underwent a significant overhaul to update its reactivity system, which introduces some breaking changes. While this upgrade improves the framework's overall performance and aligns it more closely with modern development practices, it has caused some friction for existing projects. Solid, which checks many of the must-haves needed by modern frameworks, also comes with its own set of strengths and challenges. As with any relatively new framework, Solid faces hurdles in adoption. Its ecosystem, while growing, is still smaller than those of established frameworks. Additionally, as with Svelte, Solid's relatively recent emergence means it has yet to establish a significant presence in the job market. So while libraries like Svelte and Solid are perfect for pet projects or small teams, there is a risk factor associated with committing to them in large teams and enterprise software. QuickJS and HTMX deserve an honorable mention, especially because of their innovations in the web dev space. However, like any emerging technology, their adoption comes with risks such as smaller communities, limited support, and potential challenges scaling for large applications. So what's the point of looking at the drawbacks of each framework? Well, it all boils down to understanding that in the current dev space, there is a lot of value in having experience in all these frameworks and being open to work with any of them. There is no perfect framework and no magic bullet when building web apps. The reality is that all these tools are more similar than ever, and players like Svelte and Angular who went out of their way to change their architecture in order to use the latest trends is all the proof you should need. So all that's different at this point are slight variations of the dev experience and the product you are building. AI code generation, while still flawed, will change the way we work and it'll force us to become more productive. Your competitive advantage will be to use AI efficiently, become fluent in all these frameworks, and be able to easily jump in any type of code base. If you want to deep dive into web development, you can check out the front-end dev career path on Scrimba and get 20% of pro plans by clicking the link in the description. You might also like some of my other videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.